Oh, my mama. Yeah. Man, we better start it, man. All right, check it out, man. You understand me? Uh, it's the Cali Kickback. It's your boy, Lewis Belt. You feel me? You already know what time it is. Jordan Lucas, how you feeling? I'm feeling good. You, Jordan Lucas in the building. You gonna drink? You gonna I'll, drink I'll take a couple of? shots with y'all. You, you I have drink? some of Chef Z's mac and cheese, so I'm good. Why not? All right. What's, what's your um, drink, drink of choice? Pull up. Pull Johnny up. Walker Black. Drink. Okay. Or the blue. The black or the blue. Oh, uh, but we ain't got no chain. Oh, what you need something? It's a Cali kickback. You don't need no chaser. Oh, don't do me like I need it. You don't Trust need me, no nigga, chaser. Need What's up? Come Hell on, no. I, man. I, I, you just for said, that, I'm going to give you an extra moment. You whatever. just said it's a Since playground. Wanna, it's I a said playground. playground. I didn't say hell. Man. Oh, that motherfucking lick it. Oh, see, oh, oh you done broke the cup. You done broke the cup. You done broke the cup. Hold on. Hit me with the. I knew I shouldn't have trusted the white cup. Yeah, the white cup. That's the cup. Oh, you wasting drinks. That's 55 cents worth of liquor. Right. She leaking. She leaking already. Okay, for sure. Hell yeah, man. Right? That's me. Right. We already start ghetto. I like it already. You <laughs> <laughs> stupid. Hey, man. Uh, Let's hey. introduce the guest. Let's introduce the goddamn guest. <laughs> special guest. The special guest. We got a legend in the building, man. Yes. You feel me? You might know him from the group Pretty Ricky. You understand me? But everybody know him as Pleasure P. Okay. Give a round of applause for Pleasure P being in the building, man. Hey, yeah, for yourself. Know oh, no, 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 Gotta give it up for yourself. Okay. You know that. I always wanted to ask you this, man. All right. Where did you get Pleasure P from? Where so, 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 when I sing, I give women pleasure. Like I got the, I got the power to, you know, make a girl feel some different kind of ways internally when I lay these vocals on her. So. You know, the pleasure and you know, you pleasure the P and it just kinda like goes together, you know what I'm saying? Oh, you pleasure, pleasure. the P. Bruh, you I really you right. really a real Mac for that, cause on my mama, <laughs> I, no matter what you was gonna tell me, I was gonna guess, man, pleasure the pussy. You was not gonna guess. <laughs> on my mama, pleasure P. What else is you pleasuring besides the okay. pussy? It's, it's self explanatory. But uh -huh. I'm that was what I was hoping for. Okay. You used to get like niggas back in the day, they be like, man, I ain't calling no other man pleasure, man. Pleasure. You know, niggas feeling real uncomfortable saying that. It's like, yo, just call me P, bro. You know what right, saying? okay. I that never thought sense. of that. Yeah, just, it's just P. Yeah, because that is, but I, I, I'll be saying P when I say, I'm like, what's up, P? But, but my real name is Marcus, though. So yeah. that's the name I'm going by now. Okay, so, you know so that's, that's yeah. what the women that, that really think they know you that like, Marcus, I ain't calling you pleasure, P. I'm calling yeah, you Marcus. Marcus. I, see, I thought that okay. was just your TV name <laughs> in the album. You got an album, Marcus, yeah, Marcus Cooper, right? The introduction to Marcus Cooper, but this this new wave I got going with new music, it's, it's, um, it's like Galaxy music, but um, I'm going by the name of Marcus Ramon now. That's like my middle name. So, Ramon, so, yeah. Ramon, I'm from Miami. Yeah, that's that Ramon, Miami Miami señor, from Miami, you know what I'm saying? El señor, si se puede. That that groom man, okay. you know that. Oh, so kind you of from Miami? That's you from the 305? Yeah, I'm from Miami. Okay, yeah. Yeah. okay. So he, he be like around the know. Spaniards. He be around the the pretty black girls. He be a, it's a whole mix in Miami. A whole mix. Okay. Haitian, Jamaican, whatever, yes. whatever you want is that. Right. They you can tell by a shirt from Miami. Look at that silk. <laughs> <laughs> you can only it, get that in Miami. It looks steam, too. It looks steam. <laughs> yeah, you okay. can't iron silk. Okay. You got to steam it. Oh, my mama. It's dinner clothes. Dinner clothes, man. Oh, you, gotta, oh, you, you gotta, going to dinner after this? You got to put the, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, shit. So what's your favorite spot? Do you have a favorite spot in L.A.? Because I'm sure you've um, been here multiple times. I don't have a favorite spot, but I have a few like spots that I like to go to. Okay. Got to hit Crustaceans. Oh, okay. Got to hit Katana. Okay. Got to hit Taisho. Um, couple more spots I like to go to. I like catch a lot. Okay, stuff like that. Yeah, it's yeah. Cool. You like all the bougie shit, <laughs> right? Nah, you ain't say, I'm, I'm going to we, we, We're talking about dinner, right? Yeah. I, I, I go to Car Harold's on, on the karaoke, whatever that Corey be doing. Mm -hmm. I go there and have some fish and, and chicken wings. It ain't no, you know, you no pressure. Yeah, how you? I know you're a Florida cat, man. So how's LA for you? Like, you know what I'm saying? Cause Florida is a whole different world. You know, we from the Bay Area, so we yeah. fuck with the ghetto shit, man. You understand all me? The time. You know, so Florida yeah. is, but well, Florida not just only ghetto, but it is though, because you got Miami, you got the <laughs> South Beach, and after we that, got the same. Right. We, we got the other side of the bridge. Where it's, it's the same shit. It's like you know, you got your your mom and pop restaurants. Yeah. Then when you want to, you know, dress up and put on something nice and go on a date, you got the sexy fishes and yeah, the prime one twelves. Like Miami 12s is and good the, for that. We we, we well rounded. Yeah. You might go get a, a, a nice plate of Haitian food or a nice nice plate of oxtail, or you might go go like go to a Cuban spot or something mm -hmm. and just. Have some rice and beans with plantains. You know, it's just you making me hungry, P. You making me hungry. <laughs> yeah, Did you mix with something? All, all you mix with Florida, Haiti, Haitian, or Cuban. Yeah, you just regular black. Yep, just regular. I know that's right. <laughs> Shout out to the community. just regular. 
Okay. Oh, my So mother. how do you feel like it's been different? You know, I feel like you've been solo for a while now. It's well-deserved. You know what I'm saying? You're a talent in your own right. Um, how do you feel like that has been different versus being in a group? Um, solo is just more me. It's more work to do. When you got a group, <clears throat> excuse me, let's say time. let's say I'm tired and I got to do an interview. One of us might be the more energetic person so I can just be laid back or, you know what I mean? It's just, uh, you know, it's kind of like that. On the stage, the stage is filled up more because it's four of us. So it's just like, you know, mm -hmm. obviously for me, um, I had to sing and do ad-libs the whole time. So I'm pretty much working the whole time when I'm on the stage with the group. But, yeah, solo is just, it's more me and it's more... Um, <clears throat> I guess I would say there's more thought behind what has to happen. Like the screens have to be a certain kind of way behind me. Or the mic has to be set because it just, it's, it's no like, you know. You can't fall back You on can't it, deflect. Really. Yeah, yeah, you got to, yeah, so. Mm. Hey, so you like being a solo artist for sure. Way more than being in the group? Um, I never thought I would, you know, well, let me let me start here. So I, I grew up um, singing since I was like nine years old. And um, you know, like I, the first song I ever sung was "Immature." I will never lie. My mom put me in a talent show, and I won first place. So since then, I've been a, a solo artist. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. And um, I wrote a lot of songs um, pretty much before I got in Pretty Ricky. So when I got into Pretty Ricky, like um, age ain't nothing with a number. That was already that was one of my that was one of my songs. Shorty, would you be mine? That was one of my songs. Like I wrote a lot of those songs. On, Prior um, to being in a group, right? What? Never knew that. Boom. Right. So, <laughs> okay. Um, I met those guys uh, at a talent show, and um, their father had a record label. So I went to their father. Was like, "Yo, I'm a solo artist. That's why you hear in, in um in Baby Blue's first verse of Grind on Me." He said, "Pretty Ricky, Pretty Boy, doing pretty good things." I, my name was Pretty Boy then. You know what I'm saying? And then uh. We, matter of fact, the first matter of fact, the first song we did together was "Grind on Me." So he called me to the studio one day. I was like, "Okay, I'm gonna come through there," and um, it was just you know me, Baby Blue, and, and Spec in the studio, and the beat played, and we worked on that song for like five days. Then by the time that song was finished, uh, cause Baby Blue would engineer us and stuff like that, so you know, um, so y'all first song y'all ever made together was, was "Grind on Me." Was "Grind on Me" a hit? So then from there, Jim Johnson and them came and they heard and they were like, he gotta be in the group. And then that kind of just changed the sound of what they were doing. They were, they was, they were a rap group named the, the Mavericks before I got in there, so. Cause you was the only one that was a singer, right? Yeah, I'm the only singer, yeah. Oh, and you, so, and you, you not related to them? Nah, uh-uh. So I thought all y'all was related, so all of right, the rest of the group was related. <laughs> yes, exactly. Never knew wow. that. Yeah, exactly. Damn, and then y'all the biggest song at the time. You feel me? And that yeah. was you on the hook. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and and and, and on the on the ad libs throughout the rest of the song right, too. Right, because he said I really saying? did all of the parts that I needed to Damn. show up. Because we was the, you you were singing, and that's the part everybody oh, was first grinding. Of all, on. First of all, Pretty Ricky was my first concert. I was five years old. I don't oh, know wow. why my mama brought me to that show. It, but I remember to this day, everybody was in blue. It was fly as hell, and I feel like that was one of my favorite concerts. Five you was ago. five yes. when that song came out? I, no, what, during a concert. I don't know when, but I heard it everywhere. You hella young. Yeah. God But damn. that's just the Do that it, trip you out impact. to hear that? It do. <laughs> but then again, I was young, I was young too, so, was, you know, I'm still young. Yeah. Right. But we was just like, yeah, in our early 20s. That The impact yeah. that you guys had was definitely felt by everybody. Thank you. A lot of people got pregnant to that song. Facts. Or, let's talk about the album. You had you do y'all understand? Do you understand? You had gangsters really dancing in house parties, <laughs> get grinding on the on floor. The floor. <laughs> they was on the floor. Real hood niggas. But Dreads, they didn't grind, grind on me. They, they was in it. Nigga, but, put they strap but, down that's when they your come on. Take your, but yeah. it, but in Miami, that's how it is though. Like a gangster nigga. Used to dance to Uncle Luke for the girls and stuff oh. like that, and they'll shoot you right after. Fact. You know what I'm saying? You like, don't give a fuck. they just dancing and having fun. I guess, you know, Lil Duval, he, he kind of showed like how Florida people would be, you know, still yeah. be acting and stuff. Like, you go to a Miami party, you'll still get the same thing. So, yeah. I ain't been to but, a Miami party. Yet. But for an RB singer, though, it's like, I feel like a lot of RB singers don't get the respect, like, in the hood that you have. 
Cause I'm right. telling you, like you hood niggas' favorite singers. Like mm-hmm. all the ladies love you, but it be hood niggas talking about motherfucking. I'm trying to be like Pleasure P, or for what? example, when you had dropped that boyfriend number two. Boyfriend. You know the niggas was like, hold on. Cause I was a boyfriend number okay, two. Okay, and y'all for was sure. ta- and they was taking pride in. They was like, I ain't got you. Be made side, you made side niggas cool. I know you did the, the side nigga anthem. We blame you. Uh, <laughs> we blame you. Was you a side Pleasure. Nigga? Was you uh Shouts out to my brother Rico Love. Um, okay. Rico Love Real actually time. wrote that record. Uh-huh. And, um, uh-huh. you know, just from what I was talking about at the time, like, I had a hood classic like Digiron that came out first. And Static Major, he would be like, yo, if the hood don't mess with it, don't fuck with it. You know what I mean? So I always just made music for people that I can relate to and they, and they can relate to me and I don't care about nothing else. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Fact. Oh, so you intentionally knew what you was doing. Like, this is going to make hood niggas get a yeah. little nasty. Yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Look, he's like, ah! But he reminisce about some shit. Because I was in, yeah. I was in, motherfucker, I'm going to lick you okay. up. I'm still Man, to this day. I wasn't day, even eating like, pussy, but okay. I was thinking like I was eating pussy. I'm, I'm going to lick you up. You ain't even got your feet wet yet, nigga. Oh, my mom, I ain't no okay. pussy. I'm screaming that motherfucker. So, and you mentioned Static Major, who is legendary in the music industry. Absolutely. Um, R.I.P. Who do you feel like shaped your creativity in terms of music? Who do you feel like were the main people you feel like, damn, they inspire me where I could make the music that I make now. They gave me up. They gave me free game. Well, um, they I'm going to I'm I'm say this guy named Vitamo. Um, okay. He was my first, like, when I got out, he uh, pretty much let me, I would, I would work and in, in, in pretty much pay for demos and stuff, mm-hmm. you know, and then I would go to school and pass my, my, my you know, the CDs around after we burn them and, we, you know that kind of vibe so I spent hours and hours and hours of, of learning how to record you know uh, with him and a guy named Ludus Charles and then from there I graduated to you know working with the static majors and uh, you know all of those kind of people but by the time I got into the studio with Baby Blue and his engineering it's like yo I already, I'm already i already good at this right. and now now she's like I'm a seasoned motherfucking it's bitch even, it's even, yeah you know okay. it's, 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 it goes down real fast so, so you feel like you better than ever I am. Actually, I know I that's am. right. Hey, ATL, pull up on me, you understand me? July 27th, I'm at the Uptown Comedy Corner, you understand me? It's your boy Louis Bell, not the help. Come on, feel free to pull up on me. Pop your pee. Come on, we're going to have a good time. Get your tickets right now. Do not miss out. Yeah. Do you feel like you get the credit you deserve? I do. That's I do. Good. I feel like I do. Um, and, man, look, I work so much. Every every weekend I'm somewhere different, mm-hmm. and it's been like that for the last I don't know how many years, but you know just for forever. So that that that's all the respect I need. When that money touch my bank account, yep. and the people show up to my shows mm-hmm. and they singing my songs word for word, and they you know and you seeing the love in real life. Yeah, yeah. Cause it's nothing like online. It's one thing you know people gonna people will like you one day, hate you the next. But in person, when they like you did this for me or I was feeling that, it really hits different. Yeah, like when you, when you press play. And you see the club go crazy on the hotline. That's all, the, and everybody Man, singing oh it. That's all the. That's all the things I need, right and there. And if you think of that, oh, I, I done got so line. much ass <laughs> to your music. I feel like I owe you something. <laughs> no, they they're on everybody's sex playlist. Yeah, there's not one. If it ain't right, if Pretty Ricky or Pleasure P isn't on a sex playlist, that's how I feel. Cause you ain't culture. Yeah, that's crazy. That's gonna set. Do the you tone. be fucking to your own music? Of right. Course. Really? Of course. That's kind of over the that's, top. No, that's you hot. listen to Pleasure P and you getting fucked by It's all right, bitch. You're kind of obsessed with the music. <laughs> but if the music That's what a woman want to hit. That's right. what she want. Yeah, we want to be serenaded. Yeah, she want that. Why would Why would I not use that? Mm-hmm. I, I created that for a reason. If it worked for everybody else, why wouldn't it work for me? That's game. And okay. you know that, huh? Yeah. Look, he's like, yeah. <laughs> when I was younger, I didn't. Uh-huh. And then we, 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 we kind of just figured it out. Like, by the time you play this song, you'll be here if you do this. You know what I'm saying? And it, it actually works. Yeah, that's crazy. Do you feel like because of the persona that you show to the world that a lot, a lot of women are like, I ain't messing with him because I know he get bitches? Um, for me, it, it, it's like that, but I like it like that because, I mean, you got to really get to know me mm-hmm. to know that, you know, who I really am. I, right. You know, I kind of just, I kind of just be in the cut anyway. I'm not like some... You don't hear a lot of, you know, you don't no. see me yeah. doing no, I just be in my own world, just, I'm just chilling. You don't really chilling. hear no yeah. goofy shit about Pleasure B. I yeah, be you be on some yeah. P shit, player okay. shit. Right. I be chilling. Uh-huh. Yeah. Just down to people business, I don't speak on everybody, you know, like, right. this day, like, you got everybody speaking on everybody's shit. And, and everybody putting their business out, so it's giving people room to place yeah, their opinions on it. Yeah, I'm cool. Okay, well, speaking of that, 
You did do Love and Hip Hop Miami. Yeah, I So did. you was the home base for where you're from. Do you feel like that gave people room to speak on Pleasure P in a way that you've never experienced before? I think that it that the show portrayed me in the light that I didn't want to be portrayed in. Right. Um. So that's why I quit. Right, and, and I won't do it. And again. how you feel like it, uh, people betrayed you off being on? They, okay, so they will they'll record us one day and say, "Hey, we're gonna do this scene. She's coming. So Shay's coming to, you know, coming coming down from Atlanta. She has a sexy lingerie on. She has a key right here because she wants you to move into the apartment with her and whatever, whatever. So you do the scene with her. Okay, cool. Then they'll then they'll wait another day and they'll be like, "Yo, your ex is moving in from Jamaica. Oh, she so she wants you to." Uh, you know, she wants you to help her with some connections and stuff like that just to kind of get herself off the ground and whatever, whatever. And that's it. Give her a kiss on the cheek or, like, or something like that. Give her a kiss and say, okay, cool. All right, cool. Bam, done. Now, when you see it on TV, uh -huh. it look like this girl done cook for me and all this kind of yeah. stuff. And I just totally just disrespect her to go see another bitch. Wow. And now the world is like, I waited all this time to to see how he really is, and, and that's like, how he is. And I'm like, that ain't even that ain't even what it is. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And then, then the thing about it is like all those people around, like they're not like, I don't want to say like they're they're not. What's the word I'm looking for? They they they're not like. I don't know how to say this, man, but um, they they're they not on no gangster shit or, or looking out for your best interests. No, I mean like they they don't really know what. Fame is oh, oh right. So so they so they chase it like we used to have to run 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 away from it, run away like run run you it's know so go to a mall and girls yeah. banging on the wind like we had experience that so we kind of just know what that's like. They're like thirsty for it, so mm -hmm. they'll do anything for it, and you know you find yourself just in the middle of something, and it's like well damn that's like I ain't even like I don't even rule I don't even move like this in right. real life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like y'all yeah, want to do this for the TV, but. I'm yeah. not on that. And I ain't this generation that. is so big on that clout. Like, you have yeah. to think, they, they made a word for thirsty motherfuckers that want, you know? For real. A certain sort of fame. You so. think you think Love and Hip Hop helped your career or hurt it? I think it... Um, or it didn't do anything. It definitely helped uh, in the sense of what we used it for. We used it, and, it, and it, you know, we did one tour. We were, matter of fact, we did two tours after doing it. So, I you know, of course... I'm just saying the bad. I'm just in a bad experience that I feel like I have. I feel like they portray black men to just be cheaters, mm -hmm. and you that know, it's it's never like it, like I'm like, well, why do we have to do it like? Why do we have to do it like that? Why can't we just do this and then just be the truth? Right. Yeah. They don't want to do that. So they that's the, just they want the drama. Because that sounds like you reading the script. He said, "Learning got a key." Yeah, he's like, "Why can't we do she this? She gonna move but, in? Is that a script?" But it is to a certain extent. But some people go off book. That's what they say. Some like how he said. Some people uh, is like, "Okay, well, I'm on. I'm in front of the cameras. I'm gonna then, act a certain way." But he like, they like, just told me to show up and the girl cooking. I ain't really know no better. Damn, that's and, janky. Right. And then they yeah. edited it so it might look like he was enjoying the food. Nah, like, for real. <laughs> yeah, they did that to me on uh, MTV for sure. Oh, you got done like that? It wasn't a negative light, though, for sure, but it made it look like I was yeah. on some, like, we had an intimate connection. When it was And that. it never was, yeah. for Real sure. Reality TV is good for that. It's good, so, but you, but like if you're a player, said, you, you can play it. it. You Right, exactly. Yeah. And you using it to promote you guys' tour was even better. Yeah. Now, going on tour, did you feel like you had problems with the guys? Because at this point, you guys were at different points of your lives. So do you feel like it was easy? Okay, we all here to get this money, or it was more like, I gotta deal with these niggas. Nah, it was it was more so like, um, we just happy to be doing this. You know what I mean? And um, certain people they take it serious, and then certain people they don't. And then after a while, it come it becomes a a thing to where you know you'll see you'll see three members now instead of four because. Oh. This, you know, it just, just you know, yeah. that's how it goes. So, what, what, did it ever get to a point where it's like uh, somebody getting too much attention, like, like, um, you know, all the hoes want to fuck with y'all type shit, pretty Ricky type? Was it? We know who was did, getting all the attention. Not everybody got their own fans. <laughs> everybody got their own fans. Everybody got their own fans. But pleasure, you respectfully, they had you up there like Beyonce. No, they did. They, man. Yes, they did. They had, he said I was singing all the tune. I was doing the background. They had you working. Listen, you, I ain't gonna lie. Listen, no, listen. We, you know, we fuck with the whole pretty Ricky. No, I you feel love. Me? No, I, I love. But pretty, at the, the same whole pretty time, Ricky. you feel me? We fuck with the just whole like pretty we love the whole Destiny show. I love Michelle. I that's love Kelly. Point. But they were pushing Beyonce mm -hmm. to bring, and what that's I'm how saying, it was made. What I'm, what I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying for this, like, 
Anytime you see an interview or anything, I'm the most quiet, laid back when I let. That's what they all say. Beyonce was always a quiet one. That's because nah, they like fine. She we need talk. To. Beyonce used to talk. I wouldn't. I, hmm, I'm more it. like chill. Like them boys just be the wild ones. All the, right, the, let me ask you just straight up. Fuck all this Hollywood <laughs> shit. We have the Kelly kickback, man. This thug mansion. I wish you who had the who was getting the most bitches in Pretty Ricky. Don't. Everybody had their own share. <laughs> That's player. He you you a good guy. That's the truth. Everybody got their own taste. Right. Everybody got their own kind of girl they like. Everybody got their own like. So I, who can count and say? So that never affect y'all like y'all relationship. Like we ain't on a little B two K shit. We ain't never fall about no women or nothing like oh, that. We I know that's, that's right. right. We ain't never, you know what I'm saying? Like we okay. we were raised like yo, this is what's gonna happen, and yeah. if this happens, this is what you know. We never like fell out about no women or nothing like that. That's wow. very different. Ever. Yeah. Cause, Cause you, you know, hear about that. It's always the women or some money or some money. It really it be the money. Definitely the money. Though, okay, sure. that but that's more player. Yeah. Have problem about the money. Yeah, don't have problem. Don't about have no problem women. about the bitch. Yeah, no, no. Cause she, honestly, she if it was some other niggas in here, she choosing up anyway. Exactly. So it really don't matter. It ain't no point to even fight over that. Yeah, that's my boyfriend number two coming. Can you keep it playing enough to be like, okay, he got it this day, but I got it that day. You feel me? You know, it's two Real ways title. to look at that song. We used to do that, you know, like as like in the group, we what? used to do that, like yeah, and we was taught to do that. Man, y'all keep it playing, man, cause look, you day she gonna try to she gonna try to break y'all apart. You know what I'm saying? Right. Nah, don't say nothing. Just make her think y'all don't know. So y'all don't y'all don't had a little lady y'all passed around in the group, but uh, y'all favorite one. I was like, <laughs> it's a you it's seen a, Cindy it's a today? out there to fuck the whole pretty yeah, Ricky. You seen Cindy today? We had a lot of those. Oh. Bitch, you didn't fuck Pleasure P. You fuck Pretty Ricky. Some the whole group. Some, whole group. some of them famous now. What? <laughs> you girl, lying. Now, now Pleasure, now. you know, Marcus. You know you can't say that, Marcus. And I say. Some of them. I say some of them. Who? Who? Some? Yeah. Some of them. Who? I ain't oh, saying. Oh, can oh, you leave me? Can we get a hit? I ain't, ain't going to do that. Oh. But I'm just saying. They big the, time the, or the, they, the, they working on the it? The crazy, the, like you, it'd be, it be crazy to see like when you came up and you see these women around. And you be thinking like they cool and this, this and that and that and then time go by and then they come up a little bit or something like that and that's what they was around to do the whole time. Right. And then you're like, oh shit. It makes sense. And then when they see you now it's like Oh, they act bougie? Have you yeah. almost almost got caught up with one of those though? Nah, never. Damn. That's crazy that How you know the bougie? signs? Cause we had OGs. We listened to OGs, man. For sure. For we had sure. good help we had we had good guidance and, you know, stuff Free like game. that. Free game. Yeah. yeah, raised by OGs, not different. IG. And so, so before we, yeah. so before we um got on, mm -hmm. our house was like the frat house. You know what I'm saying? Like, you might listen. You might come there, and uh, you might have a girl that you might like, and she'll be there one day with you, and you'll come back the next day. She was spectacular. Wow. Like, and you got to sit there and hold it. Like your pride, your ego, you got to hold that. But that talk, that that just show you like. She going to do whatever she want to do with hers. That's hers. It's not yours. So right. don't ever play yourself. You don't, know what I'm saying? Don't ever trick yourself out the road. For yeah. Sure. And until you, unless you know, like for sure, for sure, like this your onesie. And that's that. Yeah, and that's okay. your individual slice, man. The rest yeah. is a whole piece of, man. Oh, yeah. You'll <laughs> oh, be surprised. Yeah. So yeah. what's the craziest story that you've experienced with Pretty Ricky or even on your solo stuff? Like the craziest story where you like, I can't believe this is my life. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't understand the lot. question. It's a lot of them, probably. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, maybe a crazy role story or a crazy, just something you've experienced in the industry where you was like, I cannot believe this. Like, this is crazy. Like, this never would have happened to me unless I was Pleasure P in this situation or, you know? Yeah, because you was popping when you was what? How I know you got you? stories. I don't know. Like, that's, I, I, I mean, I have stories, but it's not, it, it would not be like, oh, because. I was pleasure P this happened. I got a story like I can't believe this shit happened to me. You know what I'm saying? Well what's what's that sound like? It's, it sounds like uh I was having sex with a girl, she came to the crib, she was smelling really good, everything was cool. We were we were actually hanging out at this this spot before um, you know, before she before she came back to the crib. So um she go home and she said, I'm gonna go home and freshen up and I'm gonna come to your crib. Okay. So she comes to my crib. I've been living here in LA at the time. She comes to my crib and um, you know, we start kissing and you know, we 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 doing it. So I get my condom, I put it on, 
and I'm going. We're going, we're having sex. Okay, cool. The TV is on. So the TV goes black for a second, you know, like when it's changing over to something else. Uh-huh. And then the light comes on. And I look down, she and I've seen the condom. So I'm like thinking, damn, my condom came off. I grabbed the condom, and I gr- to put it back on, and, and I felt like my condom was still on. So I was like, yo, what the fuck? And so she had a condom stuck inside of her. And I, the first thing I thought about it was like, how long was this condom inside of you? Wait, there's before? no way. That no. was the most disgusting shit ever. I dropped the condom like, oh, what the What? Fuck? Yeah, it was disgusting. It was crazy. See, now that's crazy. That's, man. that's some a, shit. That's I was crazy. speechless. That, I, I, I would never, never heard nothing like that I would have never, years. you could have never, I could have, I, I couldn't have imagined something like that ever happening, but it happened. What did she say? Like, I'm sorry. Did <laughs> you think, she was you like, probably, you probably, did you think like, was it one of your members before you? Like spectacular. <laughs> what the fuck you doing with this bitch? <laughs> Yo, she was just like, I don't want my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. And I was like, Oh my like, God, what? I need an explanation yeah. for this shit. Oh she, my God, what? I'd have been scared. She was like, my, and my ex, when I went home, he was there. He was trying to have sex with me, but I told him no. I just, I didn't even care at that point. I was just like, Just get out. She was like, Mom. She, yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> she was like, out. I just want to take a shower and go to sleep. I was like, You're not taking the shower. You're not going to sleep. You got to go. Yeah. That you was a raggedy bitch. That's, that's some yeah, raggedy that's, shit. That's some raggedy shit. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. That's some raggedy. And she wasn't. She didn't look raggedy, huh? She was bad. I know bro. he was like she smelled Clean, good. We had everything. a good time. He would have never known. Never know. That's crazy. Wow. Hey, Riley. I'm on my way to North Carolina. Pull up, you understand me? July 29th. I'm at the venue. That's what it's called, right? Well, wherever I'm at, you know I'm in Riley, North Carolina, Louisville. Not to help you understand me. I'm popping out just like this from the back. So get your tickets. When I pop out, I want to see people. So make sure y'all get your tickets. I'll see y'all in a minute. Never know. Did you have you ever tried to be in a relationship with somebody famous? Yeah, for sure. And how does that work out for you? Do you feel like it's kind of not competing of the egos, but do you feel like it's harder because you know she has a job too. She has to travel. She has to portray a certain image and things like that. Nah, nah, nah. I'm cool with all of that. I okay. understand. You know, I would you would think that because we're in the same business that you know, she would be more understanding, but mm. she not that understanding. The woman is is not that understanding because right. I'm still me. Right. Oh, mamas, I don't give a fuck who you is. I'm me. <laughs> so, like, yeah, she, she don't she don't understand, so it becomes a problem. And then it's a lot that comes with that too, because it's like now this person is kind of stuck to your name and legacy for a I minute. I hate that shit. So it's like most it's of the time, crazy. I just if I date a, a famous girl or, or something like that, we just kind of keep it on the low. And I just kind of stopped the way with it. When it's private, because they att- when you're but people known, be getting they attach it to your name. But people be getting more money going life. public with the girl. That's, yeah, the, but that's see, the hustle at this point. But see, the thing is, it's like, what's the point in that? I'm, I'm, I'm going to get my own money. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I'm going to bring my, you know, I'm going to get my own stuff. So now you got women in the in the business. They're like, oh, it, this is going to be my look. So let's get a good look. And, and the whole team is behind it. And it's like, so then it's not genuine. So the whole what's team the is point? behind your relationship? No, yeah, her team's like, you know, this this will, this will be a good look for you. You know what? I don't know about him because this is it, but this is the look. You know what I mean? Oh, this yeah. is the people, look. People you, in their ears. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and it's like, what? The, what? Are, anybody should be able to like anybody. Yeah, you like, know what I mean? Are we like, here for the love or is we here for the <laughs> And that's why I'm over here thinking. Right. Should so I then, do it so for then, the love or should so I do it for the love? He want to do it for the money, so he want to use it. No, I'm so not like that. But what I'm saying is that's so popular in this industry. Well, that's what made me curious. It's not what you think it is. There's people always in your business. Yes. Trying to just, I mean, you can't you can't even go out to dinner with a friend. They're gonna say, oh yeah, they dating her now. And they together. And like, come on, bro. I've been this been, you know, we've been cool for 18 years or whatever the hell. And I can't even be my, you know, be myself. Like right. yeah. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. Damn. Yeah, that's damn. Yeah, and then and then when when the woman break up with you and she with the next nigga in the next month, you know what I'm saying? They do it fast too. I, yeah. They move, they move you be like, damn, that ain't that can't be I real mean, love. <laughs> when I'm in a relationship, it takes me like like some, some of my relationship, I need the time to heal. Mm-hmm. You know, like you, you know, when you really yeah, in you love. Gotta get when you, when, when you done put your all in. Yeah, when you put your, yeah. it, it, it yeah. take your time. You were like, damn, you 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 another nigga already. What the yeah. fuck? Like, then you know it wasn't really then real. Then you know it wasn't real. Mm. Well, speaking of hard pills to swallow, what do you feel like is one of the hardest lessons that you had to learn being in the music industry? For the people that don't know, that everybody not your friend. Mm, doom. Because you like us, we spend so much time on the road and with people and stuff like that. You start seeing like, well, damn, when I ain't got this record out, 
Now these people don't, they ain't answer your phone call. They, mm-hmm. but as soon as you get something back going again, they they come right back and you start seeing like, well, damn, what kind of shit is that? So for me, I've been pretty consistent on you know the people that I, I deal with. So every no matter where I go, whether I'm in Australia, New Zealand, London, uh, New York, LA, I got the same you know the same friends that I mm-hmm. that I that I the same mm-hmm. inner circle. Yeah, I try to keep it mm-hmm. with the same people, you know. Yeah, yeah, because you came in the industry young. Yeah, so how I can old see you how. said were you? Twenty. Wow, Damn, yeah, twenty. 20. So. Yeah, so by the time we like with 24, 25, we living in Bel Air Estates. Like I'm, right. I'm, I'm out here fucking shit up. Like you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah you so. had more hoes than clothes around okay. this motherfucker yeah. at that time. You got all of those people around right. coming to your house parties. This, this, and that. You spending money on this, and then you start saying like, "Damn, that wasn't." This shit ain't my real. friend. Mm-hmm. It's fake. So yeah, if you had to. If you had to like uh, redo something, you know, in your earlier stage of your career, what would you change? Like, I'd have been mindful of this, and I wouldn't. Have, you know, what I'm saying, I wouldn't myself. have changed nothing. I'm happy to. I'm happy with uh, my life. I'm happy yeah. with the lessons I learned. Because if I would, I didn't learn them. I wouldn't be who I. You know, right to a place where you understand what real happiness is. You know what I mean? Is it the money? Is it the cars? Is it the clothes? Is it the, does that make you? No, it don't make me. Mm-hmm. What so, make you happy? What make how just the simple things in life, you know what I'm saying? Just you know waking up and being able to thank God that I'm alive, uh, being able to um, you know chill my family, you know stuff like that. Yeah, That's and people gotta for. really value that because you know you hear so many successful people get on platforms and be like, you know, the money don't make me happy, I'm but not it's happy. like when you broke, yeah. you need you be like nigga, fuck all that. Frankie, I need this I need, money, Frankie. I need this money. You feel me? Right. Yeah, but I'm I'm saying it in a sense of like. Okay, for instance, it's not fulfilling. I sp- I spent time in Jamaica for like maybe three years, and it's a person that like this is what really changed my perspective because I say I went from a mansion in in in, in, in Mulholland Hills to a, a condo in Wilshire, and I was just so defeated. Like, damn, I just descend. But it's like, nigga, you got a a nice condo in Wilshire. What do you you got two? What are you complaining about? So I went. To, I go to Jamaica, and I see these people. They they just on the corner chilling, playing dominoes, and they got their queue of rum. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And they they got a fish, and they're like, you want some? You know what I'm saying? One, they ain't got a lot, but they you want some? Mm-hmm. When I started seeing that kind of mm-hmm. thing, and they still happy, they still play music, and they and they go back to work, and they you know they enjoy their life. It's like, damn, bro, like that's what real real happiness is yeah. for me. Yeah. Absolutely. Like you gotta really be happy within yourself in order to you, you gotta love yourself and be happy mm-hmm. within yourself to even be happy with uh, listen, I done I done been out here, I done I done seen some of the biggest celebrities, forty million dollar mansions. Miserable. For real. Miserable. He like for Just real. Just build a dream home. Miserable, yeah. right? Cause you know, they don't know where to Materials get it from. Materials can never really fulfill you because that's not what we were. They don't here know where to get know? it from. They battling yeah. some shit that they, they you know in the that past. Money can't buy. That yeah, you know what I mean. Like you know, my daddy always say keep the air clean around you. So guess what I had to do at some point in my life, mm-hmm. I had to go back and forgive everybody for everything, and I had to stop, you know, being a victim when it comes to stuff, and I had to be at peace. And once I became at peace with everything, mm-hmm. and hey, I'm, <laughs> I'm happy. Mm-hmm. What can what can what can I be mad about now? Right. Damn, that's some that's some that's some gang. That's some knowledge you can't mm-hmm. get in college right there. Going to Jamaica will do that to you. That whole vibe is different. Like it just feels so humble and close to home. You know, no, no one is worried about the oh the posting and the social media. And that's another thing. Like you said, you had a condo. They'll be like, you ain't shit, nigga, because you used to. It's the people and what they say about you too, and uh-huh. what you expect, what you're expected to have, and it's just it's all not worth it. Cause these people ain't paying no bills. No, they ain't that's pay, a fact. These people ain't paying one bi- one bill. Nah, one. It seemed like it seemed like being famous before social media era was going. It was better than nowadays being Definitely. famous. Definitely, for sure. Why would you say that though? Cause I'm assuming because there's so many pretenders, and it's like, well, damn, you, you everybody copying off each other, and then they, you know, like you, 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 you got people following the wrong people. Yeah, right on mamas. <laughs> That's it. I'm yeah. like, damn, y'all like. This what y'all looking up to? A girl like this. I'm looking up. I'm. I, I actually know that girl for real. All right, you. You, you. you don't want to look. <laughs> yeah, I'm fucking with you. <laughs> okay, you understand? Mamas. what I'm saying that's how it, it is for me at, at least. You know. Yeah. But yeah, like I like I like I said. Listen, you can be holding on to something, man, and you don't realize you become it. 
because it, it could be affecting you in different kind of ways. And, until you make peace with it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to fuck with you forever. You been to therapy? Nope. Are you against it? No, I'm not. He sounds like you've been to therapy. I know. I'm like, you sound <laughs> real enlightening. Because my mom be like, what, my mom, I asked my mom, I'm like, would you ever do therapy? She's like, therapy is when you talk to your friends. I'm like, girl, you need help. Yeah, it's, yeah. Just yeah. Time. It's, just, it's just time. Me, I had, to, I had to take the time to really reflect and learn more about myself. Mm-hmm. And then when, when they be like, you need to read this book and that book. When I start reading a little bit, I'll be like, I already knew that. Or I already kind of, right. just based on how I grew up in the lessons. Yeah. You know? Kind of, kind of crazy. Of life. Yeah. I live that shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I live a hey, four million in the bank, no, zero. Oh, we got to get it back. I, I, I live money come and go, and it's gonna always be somebody with more money than you. Mm-hmm. And, and that's really and part of the loves. game, huh? Ups and downs. Yeah, it ain't no level period. when you go through. It no matter what level you go through, you are gonna go through ups and downs in your career, yeah. huh? It ain't in longevity. It ain't yeah. never gonna be perfect, especially if you invest in yourself. Yeah, bosses take losses. Hello, and rebuild again. And rebuild That's again. a real boss is a is a nigga that can rebuild again. Exactly. Or a man, yeah. I should say. That's where the lessons right. come through. Yeah, and yeah. You went through all. You've been you've been independent, of course, right? Yeah, yeah for sure. I love it though. You like mm-hmm. independence more than a label? I do. Why? Um, because I get to control pretty much everything I want to do, how I want to be seen. Mm-hmm. So from my uh, digital marketing team to my to to my radio staff to my publicist to just anybody that I, I hire you know mm-hmm. like I have a you know or my head of marketing like I have a hand on everything I do and I pay everybody I know what's coming in I know what's going out I know if I want to invest into a bigger production for my show then I'll do this or you know these are the things that come like as of now but, yeah you know what I mean but you feel do you feel like you would have been able to get to this level you at right now if you would have stayed independent from the beginning oh no 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 absolutely not but what they I was did, pushing y'all what, what I in did, a major learn, way. radio, big <laughs> time. What I, I did learn at the label is just, you know, I, I used to sit at Atlantic Records every day, so I got to learn what each person do, and those people now are, you know, the people that was, that was coming up, they the heads of things now, and I'm able to still like, you know, just network and shake hands, do, and, mm. yeah, you know what I mean, yeah. The, you 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 uh, was able to. Utilize the resources from labels, right, and know the value in them because this worked for the label, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. This, yeah. this, 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 this who they use, but I got access to use them. Why not? I for sure been learning, and, and, and it's sad now because a lot of artists don't even really realize what's going on behind these labels. Like it hasn't been interviews of up and coming female artists, and they like, what's the three sixty? Oh, I got to pay this back. They thinking they getting up. The, she like, I got to pay this back, and they like, yeah, you got to. They're investing in you yeah. to see if you can recoup, and then. You can keep that money after that, but you got to get in their money back. But they're not even knowing it's these younger artists. Do you feel like um, things have changed now where people are more aware of what's going on behind the doors of labels? I don't know. Okay. I stay in my own name. I don't know what people know and what they don't know. But, you know, I know what I know. And I I know, you know, this new music I'm about to drop is about to, you know, Definitely change the game and okay. give people the feeling that they've been missing for a long time. For sure, because it's a feeling that's been missed. That's, that's what I'm focused Nigga, we going to talk about I it. I see. I do. Because I ain't going to lie, bro. Like, after, after Pleasure P and Pretty Ricky and the, the, what do we have? the Bobby Valentinos and the Ushers and all that air, I ain't been fucking with the, the, the new shit. I ain't been shit. fucking with the new shit either. I haven't. Uh, really? No, it's a few that I love, but it's not that I get what he, it's that feeling. Like, I don't know. It just feels what's, nostalgic. What's, and, what is the, what do you feel like what's missing in R&B right now that you said that's missing? I think diversity. I think everybody's song shouldn't sound the same. So if Summer Walker won with this kind of sound, why is 15 more people trying to do the same sound? Like, mm-hmm. that's, you know, it, it, like, if there was a time of R&B where, yeah, Bobby Valentino had slow down. Pretty Ricky had ground on me. Yeah. That's two different styles of R and B. Facts, but it it worked. That's you know two different saying? bitches. I'm fucking. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? <laughs> For the freaky hoes, I'm <laughs> slapping Pretty Ricky. <laughs> oh, For I'm the like women, it. you feel me on some like oh, but you got loose right. around. I Bobby care about Valentino. this one. Uh-huh. Then you got then you got the neos out at the same time with the you know that kind of that kind of stuff. It's like yo. Yeah. yeah, and then it was it, some neo niggas for sure. Yeah, you needed neo. You needed everybody. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. yeah. Everybody situations. plays their part. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Oh, mamas. Uh-huh. And it, I just feel like with today's music is like I don't know when and who kids them came and took over the business and Man. made a decision of okay, we're gonna control radio this way. We're gonna do this and this and this. But I remember a time where 
Jay Z had a song out and he sounded like Jay Z. DMX had a rap song out, he sounded like DMX. Yeah. And it was still enough room for you know Jagged Edge and them to be on the radio oh, doing R and B. Crazy. And it was still enough room for One Twelve to have Peaches and Cream out and you know all of this. Like it was enough room for everybody. I, I just wish music was like that again to where. It's enough for everybody. Why everybody got to do the same thing? Because social they media, it, social media, and they say the labels now. Like they, we need it to be that this is a hit. They just leading. It's like the blind leading the blind because oh, they I don't really know. Saying. It's a lot of older people at these labels too, uh -huh. so they don't really know what the younger generation they wants. They doing what they think we want. So now we hearing all these songs that sound the same because that's what they think we want, and then it's just becoming repetitive. Ontario, <laughs> I'm on the way. Hey, check it out. August thirteenth. At the Ontario Improv, stop playing with me. I know y'all be at the mall out there. I want the whole IE to pull up. Uh, Pomona, bring y'all ghetto ass out too. I know how y'all fuck around in Pomona. So I'm being Ontario. IE, come see me. You understand me? I'm going to pop out like this. And when I pop out, I want to see y'all. Goddamn me. So get your tickets right now. Thank y'all. Love everybody. It's your boy, Louis Bell. I got balance tour. I'll see y'all in a minute. The yes. labels do that to y'all, like, hey, this is a hit. We need y'all to do this because this is what a hit is. We wrote our own, we wrote our own stuff and brought our own hits mm -hmm. to the table, and they came and they that's say, the "Hey, this is a, you know, this is the one we think." They, okay, that's the one. You know, the whole building go crazy. Everybody have an input, and then we put it out. Right. Mm. I think social media too. Everybody acting like everybody because social media. True. You got a nigga in the Bay Area acting like a Florida nigga. You right. got a Florida acting nigga like acting like a Bay Area yeah. nigga because social media. You know, people, like you said, copying everybody type yeah. shit. And I think that's watering down the talent, too. It's, it's watering down personalities, yeah. and it's water, watering down talent. Yeah, like you said, it's more popular. It's, it's more about being popular now than being talented. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And, it's, and that's affecting the industry, music, because it's like that in comedy. Bro, we went to, I went to the BET Awards a couple of years back with my son, and they told me I couldn't walk the red carpet. Uh, said with, with my son so I kind of got mad and just went off because I felt like yo we did 106 in Park we like we we a part of the you nigga y'all legends I'm like y'all like, like, are part part the culture yeah. part, and then I, then, then I look on the red carpet and I just see all these influences that, that you don't even know I don't even fucking know bro and yeah. not taking away from anybody hustle but yeah. we put the work in like yeah. you say our name people coming to see us you know what I'm saying I can't say the same for them I don't know but that like that, that's I yeah, it's yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's crazy. I, Cause you know that comedy, I feel the same way. It's like bro, I'm a stand-up comedian, bro, real life type shit, bro. I don't I, I be seeing niggas with millions of followers. I treat them the same, like right. any. Yeah, I don't. You don't get a different level of respect because of your followers right. to me, your mama. I think that's yeah. what a nigga the other day. I'm like nigga. But BT been uh. going down, so I hope you was you you seen what it was this year. Oh, I don't go to. to they me. call it the EBT Awards. Yeah, yeah, so you don't even got to worry about that. You ain't catching me. Listen, you okay. won't catch me at none of that. Any, they no letting more. anybody in. They no said more. somebody was in there selling food stamps. No I would have bought them, but I wasn't there. No more. I would see me at work. <laughs> I had a show with RSVP. Um, you know, we got a group, Ray J, Sammy, Bobby V, and myself. Okay. We got a group called RSVP. And, um, yeah, we've been doing shows. So I had a show with them in Atlanta, That's on you know, for the BET Awards. I think Ray J actually went to the awards, but not, not me. I'm cool. Mm -hmm. I feel you. I stay out the way. Yeah. Hey man, you doing Plus, it right? Plus, when you go to them kind of things, it's the same fake ass people. Like, right? Hey, what's up, man? Weird. Let's work. Let's do, 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 do. Then you hit them up, then they'll answer your phone, and then it's like, well, what, what was the what point was of all that? that for? And then you see Pump me again, faking. like, bro, I don't, I, just stay away from me, bro. You ain't even got to. I ain't gonna lie, P. I, I was feeling that same way. That's why I was nervous. I'm like, P, don't do that to me, because <laughs> I see you. I say, okay, Pleasure P said you gonna come. Okay. Then I'm <laughs> like, I ain't heard from you. <laughs> nah, so, so me, I don't wake up. I don't. I don't. I don't wake up to like five, six o'clock every day. PM. Yeah. What? Oh, cause you going to bed late? No, I record all all night. So I oh, be in wow. the studio to like okay eight, nine, ten in the morning sometimes. Wow. Then I get my little sleep in and then I'm, I'm back. So you at got it. your own oh, regimen. That makes sense. Yeah, I'm a night person. That's player. That's where you make <laughs> the best mamas. tunes. Yeah, the nice exactly. ballads. When all the spirits sleep, I'm up. Okay. Mm. Cause during the day they you live through pussy hours, nigga. Oh. Sex hours. Now anytime, any hour can be sex hours. <laughs> okay. Anytime, any place. <laughs> any, Jen, Jen, any, Jen, what's like, better, baby. sex? Morning sex or nighttime sex? Oh, that's on the hard. Person. I know. Depends on the person. It, it, mm, no, it depends on the day. I bust fast in the morning. In the morning, it's in the morning, morning we gonna fuck for two but then minutes. At night, it's at like, nighttime, I feel like I we go for about forty five. I'm feeling like I don't know. I ain't supposed to be doing this. But in the morning, it don't feel like that. 
I don't know, maybe maybe because you be on the liquor in the nighttime. And in the morning, it probably just kind of ran out of you or something. I don't know. Yeah, that, that could be some. Yeah. I just feel like night is always real mysterious. I like nighttime sex. Yeah. I got to like you to fuck you in the morning. Well, yeah, because it's like... I should, are you, that's do out of kissing? pocket, Do y'all kiss in the morning? Are you kissing? No no brush teeth? Oh, and I got to brush my teeth first. Yeah. That's, that's a know, quick... some niggas like... That's a quick, like, let me just run to the bathroom, you know, you know, whatever. Right. See, men, we treat our mouth... We treat our mouth like how women treat their pussy. Right. Nigga dog they dick. Right, right. <laughs> my mouth like, kiss girl. Well, hold on, we ain't finna do all that. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, I know a lot of guys I ain't gonna kiss, but Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not to me though. So hold on. Yeah, yeah. You don't, you don't wanna you don't wanna do that. <laughs> oh mama. Right. Uh, sure. Yeah, man. I, I'm just glad you came through, man. Absolutely. We just wanted to give you flowers. This is a spot where you mm-hmm. feel me in California. You understand me? Where you know we can get ghetto, but we are gonna keep it a little bougie too. For sure, okay. for sure. And we are gonna give flowers. You feel me? Absolutely. I want the motherfuckers that wait to people. You know, pass, pass and then it's a away. hashtag. And, nah, nigga. Yeah. For me, I, I want to tell you because I'm 29, nigga. I grew up going to hella house parties. <laughs> Dancing on the floor, fucking in in the car. <laughs> you played a big part of my life. That's yeah. love. Bro. So I appreciate you. It's an honor for me to be sitting here. You come on the mm-hmm. platform, man, and chop man, game thanks with. And for they still me. Your you know the vibe. On TikTok, they speeding it up now. Oh, listen, you can't go to R and B party and not here oh, yeah. on the hotline or I beat it up or Grind you know. Ooh, I beat it your up. Body, your body, your body was my favorite. Ooh. I don't care what nobody say. That I was got so favorite. many lap dances to that. <laughs> I beat it up. <laughs> right. I was on ass. I believe it. That you know part, that. you know what I'm right. saying, mamas. Yeah, so we are yeah. very they happy can't, you came. They through. can't take that from us, and they can't take mm-hmm. the fact that you know we did what one, two, three, maybe three or four years of touring nonstop Millennium tours. We've been doing that for the last three or four years. I, I did it solo the last year, mm-hmm. so. Yeah, we still selling out arenas. We still Forever, for, bro. like yeah. this. Uh, don't don't sleep. You know how you know how the OGs. You know how the OGs. Are, you know how the OGs fuck with like Charlie Wilson, the Izzy Brothers, and they gonna keep coming oh, out. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. y'all for our generation, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty yeah. Ricky can keep coming out. Absolutely. Pleasure Pete can keep. We gonna really be at that motherfucker. That's it. And, and, and really enjoying it though. Oh my mama, because I really know all the words. I don't know these how, niggas. How words. do you feel about people sampling all the all the all the music though? The samples, man. Sampling um, your music, sampling other people's music. Because now it's like we a sampling generation. Man, they sample a lot, a lot of our stuff now. Um, I'm getting like, yo, can you clear this? Can you clear okay. that? Can I know he running shit now. Yeah, they like, he's he like, I don't know, can but I? But I like it though. I like it. I, I, I think it. Um, it makes a whole younger generation be like, okay. And then of course, the older generation, that's my generation, they are gonna love it too. So yeah, it's a dope. It's a dope mix. Yeah, you know? as long as they paying homage. Then. Okay. Yeah, that's all mm-hmm. that matters. Yeah, don't make it like you created the sound though. Okay, <laughs> but that's mamas. what they do now. They don't even they'll just do the song and then it'll sound like a cover. It won't even sound like its own original song. The way they sample now is crazy. Yes, yeah, it's, yeah. crazy. It's, it's not original, and I feel like that's what we had with them. We had an original sound. Would you Would you like group. some like when they sample your song? Would you like the artist to be like, "Hey, I want you on the remix or something," or like I, I, I think it's corny. I, you know, I, I already did it. Why, why do I need to be on a remix of my own song? That makes sense. Too. Like for me, like I, I, I actually hate it. I'm like, yo, just do the song. <laughs> yeah, nigga, go ahead, just sound like me. Nigga. Yeah, I already, do whatever you want to do. To why do I need to get on? Some horrible stuff where you like, oh, I'm not clearing this. Nah, I haven't heard it. Nothing, nothing crazy like that yet. Okay. So I've, I've been pretty lucky, but um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, nah, for real. Yeah. Uh, Jordan, anything you want to say before we get up out of here? I think you know I done said man? everything I needed to say. You I'm, ain't, I'm happy, you. I'm you, ain't, you, ain't, you ain't take your shot, though. You know I ain't take that shot. If I, if I had a little juice pleasure, if I had a little juice... It's Marcus, I'd too. Be my, on name, a, my name is Marcus. Oh. Okay, Marcus. Well, if I had a little like bit of that, that. Yeah, she she yeah. no, look, Mark, because, yeah, if I would have <laughs> had a little... If you would have came in with some mini or some lemonade, it would have got drunk. But, but you ain't take your shot, though. You did. I thought we was gonna. Oh, I thought see. we was gonna have a moment because it's the you know the Cali shot, kickback. Shot, shot, so, I'll right. take it with some I, I ain't gonna lie. I ain't even gonna be that boozy. I thought nigga, we was gonna take a shot. Nigga, you a legend. Shot. Nigga, I'll oh, mama. I'll nigga, take a shot. On, fuck it. Nigga. I'll take a shot with Marquis. Oh, oh mama. <laughs> All right. Oh, make sure it ain't leaking now. Put a, you might got a double cup. Nah, it. Now I'm double cup. This is the Cali okay. kickback cup. Man, real place. I don't drink, so I gotta just ah. Let's do it. All right, for sure. All right, man. Cheers to three legends in the motherfucking building. Thank you. You understand me? Ooh, this a lot. I don't know, I a little bit. Ooh! I still got something left a little bit. Ooh! My stomach burning. Definitely burn. Ooh. Definitely burn. 
Hey, it's I the, had to do it though. I had Kelly, to do it. It's the Kelly kickback. I damn near got a tear coming out my eye. Hell yeah. shit. He's showing, <laughs> see, he's showing out. Oh, my mama. <laughs> nigga, oh, my mama. Nigga, first time my smoke was with Burner. You feel me? And then, nigga, I done sipped something with my nigga. I, I know Marcus, guaranteed. You can't call him. He said, I can call him Marcus. He didn't say you. Okay, him. good. Because I like calling my nigga Pledge P. Because okay. I like the Pledge and right. the P let, shit. Let, let him check that nigga. Pledge shit. Time. You understand check me? Check that nigga next Pledge and P shit. and Louis B to P. <laughs> okay. Yeah, That's man. Right. It's the Kelly Kickback, man. Appreciate y'all for tapping in. Make sure y'all subscribe. Ooh, shit. <laughs> Get the other cup. We out this thing. <laughs>